Although different funders offer specific guidance about the information they require in a data management plan or DMP, there are some areas common to most. This short video outlines some of these areas and introduces researchers to the key questions they need to ask at each stage of the document. A large part of any DMP will be describing the data which are used and produced by the project. The term data means very different things to different people. It can cover everything from the results of an experiment through to copyright clearances for third party materials. Those reading the plan will need to understand the nature of the data being discussed in the rest of the document. Researchers will need to describe the file formats they're using, the metadata they're adding, and crucially, they will need to outline why these specific formats have been chosen. They may also need to move outside their comfort zone when selecting the most appropriate formats for their data, rather than just relying on what they're used to using. The type of data that will be used will have an influence on all other aspects of the plan, so it's especially important to consider this element carefully. Data for a project is likely to come from a range of sources. Not only will projects produce original data, but many will also gather information from other places, for example, by collecting articles during a search of the literature. Depending on the nature of the project, it may include raw data gathered by other people, which may require external permission to use. It's important that a DMP outlines where the data concerned has originated in order to set the rest of the document in context for readers who will be unfamiliar with the project. Depending on the level of detail required in a plan, researchers may need to discuss their justification for either reusing or creating original data. Any data collected will need to be analysed and DMPs are increasingly asking researchers to specify how this will be done and who has the responsibility for doing it. This may be an individual or a larger group within a project team, or it may include details of any software used for analysis. Including this information in the DMP helps to ensure a level of accountability in case there are any questions around data analysis at a later date. Both during and after data collection, the information will need to be kept safe. Not only is this good practice for the current project, but it also helps to protect it for future work. Most DMPs ask researchers to outline in detail the methods that they'll use to back up their data, and again, they will need to justify why these are the right choices for the project in question. Another element of a backup strategy that needs to be included in the document is the frequency and how this will be managed in conjunction with the amount of data which needs to be protected. So, for example, do researchers need to back up their data every day or is once a week sufficient? These decisions will naturally vary depending on the nature of both the project and the data collected by researchers and they'll need to consider these areas carefully. Finally, funders will expect a DMP to contain some plan for where data is to be stored, whether this is online or physical. It's worth remembering that the methods used for backup may incur a cost, either in terms of physical equipment like a hard drive or lasting digital storage solutions. Researchers will need to factor these costs into their overall budget and include this in the DMP, which helps to avoid any nasty surprises at a later stage. As part of the general move towards open research practices, funders will want to see evidence of data sharing plans. Most research funding bodies now require that the data which underpins the projects they support is made available so that other researchers can build on it in their own work and also so that any conclusions can be verified if necessary. DMPs will need to outline researcher plans for the long-term sharing of their new data, such as selecting an appropriate repository and using accessible file formats. Researchers also need to think about how data will be shared with colleagues during the project and any implications that these practices might have. The most important information to consider when planning for data sharing is how these plans fit in with any funder mandates and how the plans take into account any sensitive information which might be produced by the project. This leads us on to ethical issues. Researchers will need to carefully consider whether there are any ethical or privacy issues connected to both the data they use and the new information that they generate. This includes thinking about if the data includes any information which could be classed as personal or sensitive, 
Many researchers dismiss this area as they don't consider their information to be sensitive, but it's worth remembering that the definition is actually quite broad and that there are severe penalties for the misuse of personal data, so it pays to be cautious. Researchers also need to make sure they have adequately planned for the processing, storage and sharing of this information and that they follow appropriate guidance at all times. Although some researchers work alone, many work in teams, so another aspect that the DMP will need to cover is who has ultimate responsibility for both the data and ensuring that the DMP is followed. This is important during a project as it means that an individual or group has named responsibility for certain elements such as data backup and storage and this helps to ensure that nothing gets forgotten. This is especially important if a researcher leaves the group for any reason as if everyone knows who has responsibility for what, it's more likely that nothing will be missed in the changeover, something vital when you're dealing with important areas such as data backup. Named responsibility for data is also important after a project when once the information has been shared. Other researchers wanting to use the data in their own work will have a dedicated contact for questions without having to waste time trying to find out who to contact. It also helps to ensure that someone takes long-term responsibility for the data in line with many funder requirements. Remember, the areas outlined in this video offer a general guidance only. Researchers always need to consider the guidance offered by their specific funding body when compiling a data management plan. This information should be readily available via the funder website, but you can always ask your local librarian for advice and help.